This week on the Computer Chronicles, travel software. We'll show you how to plan a cross-country road trip with this school program called Map and Go. We'll take you to CitySurge.com for a guided virtual tour of San Francisco. We'll show you how to buy plane tickets and book hotel rooms on the web. We'll see the new online version of the Lonely Planet Guide, plus some CD-ROMs that'll give you a preview of your photo safari to Africa. And we'll follow this family as they travel around the world with their laptop computer. Plus, my pick of the week, a nifty little road warrior gadget. Don't leave home without it. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One's Mathematics Tutor in a Box for school year 98-99, including six CDs and workbooks. And by Z Auction, the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll-free technical support and overnight delivery. And by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise and internet computing news, reviews, features and how-tos for a Windows world, because the world runs on Windows. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. If you're planning a trip somewhere, either for business or pleasure, odds are you're going to do some pre-trip planning. Well, nowadays that usually means turning on the computer, looking at some CD-ROMs, and logging on to the net. One of the most popular uses of PCs and the web these days is for travel research, trip planning, and actually reserving and buying plane seats, hotel rooms, and rental cars. Let's start with a relatively simple case, a trip by car in the United States. And if I wanted to do that, Keith, I could use something like this Map and Go software, which you're a software engineer, you worked on this thing. How do I plan a trip? I have friends, for example, in Flagstaff, Arizona, who want to drive out to San Francisco. And they say to me, what's the best route? How do I get there? I say, go to Map and Go and figure it out on your own. Right. You first position the map to where you'd like to set your, your start point. In okay. this case, Flagstaff. I right click on Flagstaff and set it as my start. Um, then you can go to the San Francisco, which is uh, your destination, mm -hmm. and set that as your finish. Then you calculate the route. In this case, I'm calculating the quickest, but you can also calculate the shortest or a scenic route. So what's route. the fastest way to get to San Francisco by car? That's correct. And, and that's it right there? Take I-40, go to I-15, et cetera, et cetera? That's correct. The next thing you want to do is calculate some places to stay along the way and, and sites to see. All right, so I can say, what are the interesting things I'm going to pass while I drive along that route from Flagstaff to San Francisco? That's correct. Okay, well, let's, say, let's focus on actually getting here, because they've said, well, I want to see the Golden Gate Bridge, for example. Uh, can they actually find that information about where to drive to the bridge once they get into the city? That's correct. I've scrolled down, and I've selected the Golden Gate Bridge, and we can get information on that. And so they see uh, a picture of it there. There's a description of it, and I see you have audio. What, what, what happens there? The Golden Gate Bridge spans the Golden Gate Channel between the Pacific Ocean and So we could be sitting in the car, Francisco, laptop in hand, and the kids could be listening Marin to this County. stuff in the back of the car. That's correct. Or All right, now what about the hotel part of it? They, they're going to come here. They, they're not going to stay with me. <laughs> they say, we're looking for a place to stay. Can they find a hotel on something like this software, too? Right. We've set this up so that it does a filter on four-star motels. Okay. So we're only showing motels that AAA has rated with four stars or above. Uh -huh. uh, you can select a hotel off the list and get information on that. Uh, what it shows you is a, is a text description of uh, mm -hmm. the motel. You can also show a, a you know, visual summary of the The kind of, of things features. you might see in, in a little book guide or something. That's correct, and also some information on the rates. Uh, you can attach the route just simply by, attach this point of interest, I mean, by simply by mm -hmm. clicking on the attach button. All right, so I could print out that route that you showed before and attach the things I want to stop along the way, the descriptions of those, and so on. That's correct. All right. Uh, You've got a GPS little thing over here. Does this actually work uh, with the software? What does this thing do? Well, connected to your serial port on your laptop, it allows you to track with a moving map display as you drive down the street. If you have Can a Can you show me what that would look like? Sure. So this would be a live GPS. This is, for people who don't know, a satellite receiver. That's correct. That's tracking my location, and it's feeding it into your software so that I can actually have a map display on my laptop, and it shows me where I am? That's correct. What's, what's that look like? Tell me what we're doing here. Right now we're tracking from a log which was recorded earlier. Okay. Um, I can 
So you, this green dot you see tells you your location. Okay. And this arrow is tracking you down the street. Okay, so that little dot is where I am on the map in any one particular. That's correct. Real quick, finally, you've got a Palm Pilot over here. You can download your route into the Palm Pilot rather than keep it on paper, huh? That's correct, and you can also connect that with the GPS receiver, and it will tell you where your next turn Great. is. All right, Keith, thanks very much. Well, obviously, the Internet has become a vast resource for travel planning and research. You can plan a whole trip or zero in on one key destination. Let's say you wanted to visit us here in the San Francisco Bay Area. One good place to start your homework would be at a site called CitySearch.com. Planning a trip to San Francisco? Wondering what to see, where to go? Well, any guidebook will point you to the well-known sites of the city by the bay, but those postcard views don't really represent San Francisco as the locals know it. That is the idea behind City Search, a website that digs below the pretty picture views of travel brochures to give an insider's view of the city and its people. Because print mediums by definition have sort of a finite amount of space, all the news that's fit to, fit to print, um, we can obviously cover a lot more and create an amazingly comprehensive database. Here in San Francisco, we have over 55,000 locations that we've profiled and on any given day, over a couple thousand events. Um, and so it's a very, very deep resource for the tourist or the local. City Search currently has guides to American cities on both ends of the country and a few in Australia. The approach is always local. City Search editors look for what's hot, who's in town, where to eat, and where to play. It means visiting and revisiting businesses to keep the site up to date. Alongside hotels and restaurants, City Search recommends some unusual attractions. There's the Melting Point, a beer brewery turned artist studio and gallery. Then there's the Barbara Streisand Museum, a glitzy palace of memorabilia, where images of the singer stare down from every wall. It may not suit everyone, but that is not the point. When I go to a city and I'm a tourist, sure I want to know what the basic tour sites are and the basic locations, but I want an insider's view of that city, written by people who live and work in that city. And so what I get with City Search is I get, for a tourist, all of the basic information about the key tourist locations, but then I also get lots of in-depth information about really where San Franciscans hang out and what are the great bars and clubs and restaurants and things of that nature. Um, and so it, it's, it's that view um, that really complements it for the tourist. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. While the net is good for doing research on a travel destination, it's also a great tool for shopping around and actually buying your plane tickets and everything else you need for a successful trip. And in some cases, you can actually save money doing this. Michael, you wrote this book, Net Travel, How Travelers Use the Internet. Can you really save money by buying plane tickets online, for example? Absolutely. You can save money. There's last-minute deals where you can save money, but even on a regular trip, there's all sorts of offers on the internet that your travel agent might not find. And one thing I like about planning my travel on the internet is that I can actually see all the options. I remember a while ago I was at a travel agent's office and she was clicking on the keyboard and, and yeah. looking at the screen. And I just I wanted to turn the screen I around. I want to have access to, see to all what that information. Right. And through the net you can. You don't have to be a travel whiz. You can just enter a city. You don't have to know the airport codes. You just can get airline flights, you can get hotel rooms. All right, let's car. do it. Now people have okay. heard that there are deals you can get on the net. Now how do you do that? Well, one way I would start out is go to a site such as Preview Travel and click on their service, which they call Fairfinder. Mm -hmm. Now, this service, Fairfinder, will let you pick your home city, in our case, San Francisco, okay. and see all the other... What's all the cheapies this weekend leaving from San Francisco? Exactly. So let's go to San Francisco and click it here. And then you say, click here to see your fares. Mm -hmm. And so it'll look at all the flights that leave from San Francisco and then take you to the major cities, and you can see So Kansas the airlines City, sort of, uh, Vegas, ahead of time, Newark. say, hey, I've got a lot of empty planes, so we'll discount them and put them on the website. That's more and more prevalent on the Internet these days. They have empty planes. They say, hey, we have, the, we have to fill these planes, sure. and they send out these deals, and you can go across the country and back for less than $200 So what kind of sometimes. deals? Uh, this right now is showing New York round trip for 251 Not too bad. Yeah. 
and uh, and wherever you're going you can take a look and see what the best right, now one of the problems with some of these sites is michael the little airlines don't play this game like southwest airlines for example which might have good bargains too. do i have to go just to their website to do that in some cases yeah you have to go to to their site here it is mm -hmm. and they are listed on some of the services are not listed on others so you might if southwest has the best deal you might not see that when you go to a major service so you can go here click on reservations and it will take you to a screen so if you really you want to do a good job maybe check out specific airlines not just some of the generic sites. absolutely and especially if you know southwest might have a deal you are living in san francisco sure. oakland you want to go to burbank la you would check out a site such as southwest all right, and so, uh, uh, let's now ask about hotels. That's airlines. Can you find deals on hotels, too? Absolutely. I like to first become informed, and one way I do that, I go to a site such as Fromers, which has a long tradition in the guidebook business, mm -hmm. and go to his site, Whoop. and... Got to type those things in right. I guess that's the issue, right? There we go. All right, so what happens on the Fromers site? So, well, he has a real voice, and he has a real personality, and you can tell by his site that he will recommend, like, like your friend might recommend a hotel. So this He'll is a real guy who's really been there and says, Absolutely. hey, I like this place, I didn't like that Absolutely. place. Absolutely. And I was looking a week ago or so, looking for a place to go in Acapulco, uh -huh. looking for a hotel. So I went to his 200 places to which people go. I clicked on Acapulco. And then I got an introduction to the place. Mm -hmm. I got an introduction to what's around the place and hotels, lodgings, all right, toll-free Michael. numbers to call, whatever you'd like Thank to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, well, so let's say you've booked all your travel arrangements online. Now you want to prepare for the trip. In the past, you might have gone to the bookstore to pick up one of the many travel guidebooks to help you get the most out of your trip, but now all you need to do is log on to the web. And I guess uh, you guys are the Lonely Planet people. This is the book I would have bought in the past and carried around with me in my backpack. Right. But now I just go to the LonelyPlanet.com website, right? Yep. Why is it better? Um, it's better because it's more up to date. Uh -huh. um, it's better because you get complete global coverage instead of just one individual guidebook. All right, let's say I want to go to Japan. I really like all those pictures I saw during the Olympics, and I want some background information about the country, uh, visas, health concerns, shots, that kind of stuff. How do I do it on your website? Well, you go to the destination section first, and if you clicked on that, you would go to the Asia section and click on Japan and get to the Japanese mm -hmm. profile. That's a distillation of our guidebook. It's an eight-page So it's a little, little Reader's Digest version of your book on Japan. That's right. All right, so let's, let's just scroll down a little bit. Let's see what our choices are. See, actually, I have a slideshow. I can see pictures of different things in the country. That's right. Mm-hmm. Now, what about the question I asked you? People go to exotic locations. Do I need a visa? Do I need certain shots? Can I get that kind of information? You can. Uh, Where are we going? In Facts for the Traveler. Okay. List of the visas you need, um, the um, health risks that you might um, be facing. If you wanted to find out more about the health mm -hmm. problems, um, going to put you off the whole trip here, right? A complete health. Well, the section. horrible things that could happen to you <laughs> in one of these countries. It's a, a hypochondriac dream. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a list of diseases and ailments that right. you might want to consider. Now, one of the things I like about this site, well, two things actually. First of all, you have a postcard thing. I mean, when you go to a strange place, you'd like to talk to other people who've been there before. And you have to actually have a kind of bulletin board system for that, don't you? That's right. We've got two systems of audience feedback. One is postcards, which is when people tell us about okay. their trips. And one is a bulletin board where people talk to other travelers. All right, so uh, what goes on in postcards here? In postcards, um, we get feedback from people who've been overseas and in let's say in the japan one mm -hmm. that we were looking at here we've got information from somebody well, who's hold it there's a good one right there somebody says hey i couldn't use my visa or mastercard in an atm in japan that's right and they've just been come back from japan um fairly recently yeah. so that information is fresher than anything you'd find so in that's print. good to know yeah. now another nice thing here you have is something called a thorn tree because a lot of people travel by themselves and they want to find some people to travel with and you can actually find a travel partner here can't you you can there's a there's a section devoted just to traveling companions. If you wanted to find a travel companion mm -hmm. to go to Japan with, you could click on that thorn tree. There's and here's, message. here's messages from other guys looking for somebody to travel to Japan with. That's right. Um, you could post your own message and respond to them, and you could yeah. set up your own relationship. All right, now finally, what about Subway? That's really a cool feature you have here. Subway is um, our realization that we can't provide information to every single thing there is to do mm -hmm. with travel. So we've got a section of links that cover things that you should think about before you go, while you're packing your bag, and while you're arranging your transportation stuff. So it covers 
basically the whole gamut of possible links to websites covering right. everything to how to pack a decent <laughs> bag to how to book your airplane. All right, yeah. so you're, you're, you're admitting we can't do everything on our website. We'll be big boys and we'll show you all the other websites to go to that can also get you relevant information. You have to be brave enough to admit that. Yeah, idea. well, I guess when you're Lonely Planet and everybody knows your brand name, you can get away with that. Yeah. All right, so it's LonelyPlanet.com. David, thank you very much. Well, there is one more way to use a computer to make your trip a successful one. Carry a laptop with you and stay in touch while you're away. That was a key issue for the Cohen family when they decided to quit their jobs, sell the house, and take the whole family on a trip around the world. When these kids put a home video in the VCR, they aren't just looking at birthday parties and trips to Disneyland. The Cohen family is reliving a trip around the world that lasted almost a year and a half. We were originally just going to take a trip to Australia, but somehow one thing led to another, and before we knew it, we sold the house, sold the car, closed down our you know, little publishing business, taken the kids out of school, and taken off on a 14-month trip around the world. Once they had settled on a rough itinerary, they planned their trip using books, guides, maps, and the internet. The World Wide Web was in its early stages when the Coens began their journey, but it grew as they traveled, and the online information became more valuable. David's wife spent less time turning pages and more time on the computer. By the time we traveled halfway around the world, got to Australia and settled for two or three months and put the kids in the school, the scene had changed so completely that she wasn't using books at that point. Instead of using Lonely Planet, she was using LonelyPlanet.com. Instead of using photos, she was, she was using Photos.com. And presumably, she was getting more up-to-date information. A notebook computer became the family's electronic link, both to the expanding internet and to home. While her father sent electronic dispatches for an upcoming book, David's daughter, Kara, kept in touch with her schoolmates through email. That later developed into something else, by the way, which is that she wrote back to her class in Mill Valley, and the class followed her traveling around the world on a big map and learned a little bit about the countries where they went to. It later um, uh, then morphed into something else, where her class in Australia wrote uh, and asked questions of the class in America and vice versa, and there was some communication there. Email became the family's floating channel of contact and the internet its source of travel advice. Recent reports from independent travelers told them what to expect in areas they were planning to visit. Sometimes the information was correct, but not always. Once after reading about Cambodia, they decided on a trip to Phnom Penh. And then I ran into another guy who had just arrived in Phnom Penh. And his guy, I saw his guide go running, and he was with his family, and I saw this guy his guide running up to him and like having a very serious and concerned talk and I wasn't sure what that was all about either and then the day after we left um, literally within 24 hours we turned on CNN and Vientiane in Laos and there was rocket battles in the streets of Phnom Penh so the web is accurate to a degree um, but you should take everything with a grain of salt. For the Computer Chronicles I'm Sarah O'Brien <laughs>
the principal body of permanently dry land in the delta. So this is the Okavango. We've, we've seen that on the, the southern region exemplifies the Okavango. So you created this stuff all yourself, then, huh? Yes. And I can navigate through that, and if I'm interested in a particular park, a particular area, just jump ahead to that. Well, let's do that. Let's okay. go to the parks and, for example, select Moremi so we can see something about mm -hmm. the Okavango. We've got detailed maps about the region with uh, slides and photographs that are in appropriate areas. You do a rollover, you can see oh. everything from bird life to camps. So this would really be a good preview of what it would, what it would be like being there. Right. knowing what kinds of pictures to look for. What about things like accommodations? You know, if I think about going to Africa, I'm not going to find a Hilton in the middle of some game reserve somewhere. Can I find information like that? I mean, how, what the conditions might really be like? You can. In the reference section, we do everything from talk about the specific lodges. We've gone in okay. and looked at them, contact information for them. We've got photographs mm -hmm. of the travel areas uh, in the various sections, online support for it. All right, you showed me that sort of big aerial overview, but how about specific directions? I mean, if I'm traveling from place to place in the middle of Africa, I can't assume there's going to be some freeway with a, uh, an entry sign <laughs> and an exit <laughs> sign there. Exactly. How do you help me there? Well, let's say we wanted to drive to that famous Sabuti region where the Geo and other people film all of the lions okay. eating things. We're going to show you what the roads look like on the way and how the sand is soft and how to inflate or deflate your tires and actually what to expect and the length mm -hmm. of the drive. Give you detailed travel maps, which if you want, you could print out on your computer. Mm -hmm. Now show me an example of a detailed travel map. Can we actually see one on the screen? Well, that's what we're looking at Okay, here. you can do this. You wrote this program, Jerry. And let's say uh, we're going up to uh, the, there in the western yeah. range, Zimbabwe or Victoria mm -hmm. Falls region. So we'd start here and then for the supplement, we'd look mm. at uh, that particular area and then it's got rollovers for accommodation. Mm -hmm. All right, and what, what other kinds of pictures or information might I, might I get when I'm planning a trip? Again, this is not the, you know, the, norm, the normal place you're going to, and I might be concerned about things, as you said, traveling and what kind of, you know, you had, I, th I saw a thing, four-wheel drive information. Right. What would that be? All right, under, under reference, for example, if you wanted to sort of get a preview of what you're going to mm -hmm. encounter on the roads, here's your... Uh, ah, okay. So again, people don't, I think, have a concept of what it's really like to drive on some really dirt road for 100 miles in the middle of uh, Botswana somewhere. Exactly. And it, it's, it's pretty grim, so you have to don't take your little car, get your four-wheel, rent the four-wheel drive. Yep. Now, I would think there's an interesting educational use here, because, I mean, this is a real good way to learn about a country, mm -hmm. even if you're not going to go there. I mean, are people using these in schools and libraries and stuff? That's where we see a lot of the uses, so mm -hmm. that people can cut and paste all of the content and use them on their home computers or in libraries. Is this stuff really going to replace books? I mean, are you the new age publisher now with CD-ROMs instead of the going to buy the no normal print stuff? We've been promising this to people <laughs> for six years. Let's hope. Yeah. All right, Jerry, thank you very much. Well, that's our look at travel planning on a computer. Next up, another special preview look at one of the new features of Windows 98, and I'll be back with my pick of the week. Windows 98 comes with a really cool diagnostic utility called Microsoft System Information. Take a look. On the left pane of system information, you have resources, components, network information, all of the information you need to troubleshoot Windows 98. As you can see, there's a lot more information here than you really need or really want to know. But it's all here, and if you're looking for uh, troubleshooting information, you'll find it in system information. From the tools menu, you get all of the diagnostic utilities, and there are a lot of new ones, in Windows 98, including the Windows Report tool, which allows you to scan your system and generate a report on what's happening at the uh, most technical level. Things like the system file checker, a registry checker, which scans your registry looking for problems. The automatic skip driver agent, which allows you to go through and sort of troubleshoot what may be happening with your drivers. Dr. Watson, an old favor that's been around since the Windows 3.1 days, which allows you to report information to Microsoft. The system configuration utility, which, uh, look at this, it, it goes through your WinNE and SystemNE and allows you to edit these very easily within this dialog box. I wish I had this back in Windows 3.1 when I really needed to edit the, the WinNE file. And uh, ScanDisk, which is an old favorite from Windows 95. And the version conflict manager, which uh, looks for a software that's uh, crashing up against each other and competing for resources on your system. Those are the diagnostic utilities that are all available from system information. And it's a really nice feature. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. If you travel a lot, especially on business, you probably lug around a laptop computer, personal organizer, a pager, a cell phone. Well, did you know you can be a perfectly respectable and functional road warrior with just this new thing called a net phone? 
This is the Mitsubishi version of the Pocket Net phone. The service is provided by AT&T. Here's how it works. You have your own private homepage on the PocketNet website where you can keep your virtual personal organizer complete with address book, hot list for one button calling, and calendar and schedule information. You can sync up your virtual organizer with most standard desktop PIMs. Now on the fun end, the telephone end, here's how it works. This is my cell phone, my pager, my email client, and my web browser. If I want to check my email, I just scroll down to email, hit enter, and I look at my inbox. It's a small screen, but it does scroll, and it's adequate for short messages. And if I want to print the email, I can send it to my fax machine with the touch of a button. If I want to send an email, I just go to Create Message and type in a message using the keypad. It has a smart entry mode so that it guesses at the right letter for a particular key, or you can just cycle through. I can also access my calendar or my contact list. But the coolest of all, if I want to surf the web, I just select Info Sites. Let's say pick Financial and go to the Bloomberg site. I pick News, Financial News, and then I just scroll through the headlines. Many news, business, and sports sites are supported on the PocketNet system, such as ABC News, Who Wear, InfoSpace, ESPN, AccuWeather, Travelocity, etc. And what's really nice is just like with your PC browser, I can create bookmarks so that I don't have to go through all these menus each time. The cost for the service is $29.99 a month, not bad for net access, cell phone service, and all the other goodies. It's PocketNet from AT&T. That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the latest on hardware, software, and the Internet. If you need any more information about anything you saw on today's show, please go to our website, cmptv.com. Thanks for watching. Hope we'll see you here next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Z Auctions, the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll free technical support, and overnight delivery. And by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise, and internet computing news, reviews, features, and how to's for a Windows world, because the world runs on Windows. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll free 1 888 310 7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, coverage of the annual Excellence in Software Awards, the Cody's. We'll show you Riven, Cody winner for Best New Consumer Software Product of the Year and Diablo, winner of the Cody Awards for Best Adventure Game and Best Online Multiplayer Game. Plus the Cody winner for Best New Programming Tool, Netscape's Publishing Suite. Trellix was the winner for Best Software Debut of the Year. And we'll show you the winners for Best Worldwide Website, Purple Moon and Discovery.com. The annual Excellence in Software Awards, next week on the Computer Chronicles.